Hello there and welcome along to our weekly boxing chat here on Sky Sports News. I'm Teddy Draper, joined in the studio by former world champion Barry Jones, very much current world champion, contender for fighter of the year, IBF, WBO and WBC super welterweight world champion, Natasha Jonas. Tash, welcome along. Brilliant to see you both as ever, Barry, but particularly Tash. How, how do you feel? Is it all sunk in yet? Um, I don't think I'll ever sunk in. I, just don't, I don't know what you'd ever expect it to feel like. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying having time off. I'm enjoying being with the family and celebrating with my family and friends. What us non-fighters admire about the likes of yourself and, and Barry alongside you is the courage it takes to get in the ring every time. But we think it's particularly courageous to go in against a champion who's taller and heavier than you. How impressed were you with you, your own resolve against uh, Mariev de Kerr? Yeah, we, we always thought we could win. That's why we took the fight. Um, but, you know, there was times in the fight when I had to dig deep. There's times in the fight when I started really well, which has always been a bit of a problem. And then there's times in the fight when I, when I came back and, and yeah. So it's every, every fight you want to learn, you want to improve, you want to add to, something to your game. And I think, I think I showed that. When you're against a big opponent, Barry, you have to make them respect you, don't you? And was that key, Tash, doing that in the opening rounds? Yeah, it was, and you have to use your strength. And you know, Natasha can punch, but she can also box really well. I think the foot movement was fantastic. You know, the in and out with the feet, you know, not letting the care set herself, and, and, and just, just out boxed her, out, out thought her, and out fought her. And, you know, more than more than one occasion in, in the rounds. I just thought you, it was for me. It was a best display. It wasn't the show real knockers that she's had already at this weight, but I think for me, tactically, she was perfect. What about the, the last few years of transformation? Because it's like a Hollywood script, isn't it? It's like a, a Rocky movie or something. 2018, you, you lose to Viviana Obanoff, the Brazilian. You went close against Terry Harper, got the draw. Some people saw it your way. Then went close against Katie Taylor in a narrow loss. What changed for you to flip the script, in a sense, this year? You said it was mental and physical. What were the processes you went through? It was just starting again. I think, you know, no boxer likes to lose, but... I think that was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me in the sense of you, you go away, you work on things that was, you was getting wrong before, but you didn't ever think to correct because you were winning. Um, and I had to build myself up from the ground or from the last, from, from as low as you can get. And like I say, I went away, worked on myself with me and Joe, and, and, and you know, now we're seeing the fruits of the labour. It's all 17 years in the making, but you know, it's been worth it. Yeah, so we, we can talk about ladies' ages when it comes to fighting, Barry, I suppose. It's, but it's 38 years of age. Have you ever seen a fighter mature so well at this stage of their career? There's been occasions, but it's, they're very few and far between. I, but it's, it, I think people just live differently now. I think, and I think, you know, they, and they, they eat different and they prepare different and the training's different. And, no, I don't think there's no wear and tear on, on Tasha. That's the truth. You know, I think she, you know, she's had the, those couple of hard fights, but, I mean, you know, there's never been really wear and tear because she boxes the right way. So I, I think, no, I, I would dare to say, I would not say your age, <laughs> but she's coming into your prime, I feel. I think the, before, the, there's better performance now since she jumped up those massively, thought that, people say three weights, but it's four weights, really, let's be honest. And that's just, that, that, that's the craziest part, moving up so many weights and being so successful. Yeah, we're going to talk about where you're going to end up. In terms of the ascendancy you have now, you get to make some choices. How much do you do remember not having those choices when you come to, to be here in, in the power position? You know, what's, that, what's that like? It's different. I've never been here before. But I, like, I remember before the, the care fight, I kept on saying, you know, it's, it's all about focusing on the care because people were trying to throw, you know, Katie Taylor, Chantal mm. Cameron, Terry Harper, you know, um, Clarissa Shield all before the fight and, and I've been there uh, even before Obanoff when you know people were building up me and Katie and, and I, had, I had to beat Obanoff and, and because, because of whatever reason it, it just didn't happen and then all them doors shut so I was thinking I was saying to everyone let me just concentrate on the care let me get past the care and then we'll discuss what happens next and you know I had the fight obviously I got the results I wanted and we will go away now. I'm going to have time away from boxing, have a little holiday, go and watch my teammate, and, and, and yet yeah, we'll see. We'll have all the offers on the table, and I'll do what I've always done and make the best decision for me, which is, has led me, got me this far, so I haven't done too bad. Yeah, you take, you're taking a little girl out to Japan to, to watch Paul Butler's world title challenge against Nayoa and Nui. We've got a couple of belts. We've got the third one on the way. What does the future hold in terms of, of weight division? Because you have gone up into... You know, the danger zone of, of Super Welter, but you've, you've cleaned up so far. Do you stay there to try and become the undisputed, or do you perhaps go back down and look at some big fights? Where, where do you go? Like I said, I'm just going to look at all my options when, when it's in. I was, everyone knows that I'm not a, 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 like a, 
a, a, a, a bona fide 154. That's something I've went up to. I mm. can box as, as low as lightweight. Um, so, yeah, whatever options are open to me between lightweight and super welter, they're the ones that I'll take and I'll take the best one for me. So it's 19 pounds difference between lightweight <laughs> and super welterweight in terms of the, the range. Where would you like to see Tash? I mean, do you have a sense, Barry, of, of where she's at her best? I would tend to say super lightweight or, or, or welterweight would be the would be the weight for for Natasha. But e either the way she chooses to, to settle at, they're all quality opposition. They're all unified champions. Mm -hmm. you know, you're almost one yourself. And but as Christian Shields can move down, then you obviously you've got you've got um, Katie Taylor. Of course, that's a huge fight for for anyone. You know, the, when, when, there's two greatest women of all time there, who, who, who would be viable opposition for her. Your your coach Joe Gallagher is distinguished coach and judge of course in the in, in the boxing world of talent he says that you'll knock out Katie Taylor in a, a rematch what do you have to say to that Look, I don't make predictions I never have never will um, I stick to what I know which is boxing but I'm sure if opportunities are presenting themselves Joe will let me know but is it a yardstick of uh, his sense that you've improved and perhaps Katie's had a, a long hard intense career and that maybe things have changed in the 18 months since you first encountered each other I remember um, Rick Ramos saying about Jess McCaskill that if she ever fought Katie again that she wouldn't be the same Jess McCaskill because there is a confidence that you get from, from being a champion and it's not, I'm not just a one belt champion, I'm a three belt, belt champion now and you know I've, I've learned the game, I've had a few more um, championship rounds experience and um, I think Katie probably with me slow, mixed with me slow start and me... Um, did, did you grow confidence in this, this contest here we're seeing? Definitely. I, I think I give it a bit too much respect in the earlier rounds and then, you know, come back into the fight and then she just, round nine in particular, that she just, she was had more experience in the championship round than just nicked it. Um, so, yeah, that, them, they're, they're things that I've learnt now and I've learnt from that fight that don't, don't happen now. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I've always thought that I could be Katie. It just hasn't happened yet, but I'm sure if I get the opportunity again. Is that an open fight? Is it that one? Do you think, Barry, in terms of assessing who could, could win it? It's a good, it's a good fight. You, you, you have to make, it's still at the minute, you have to make Taylor the favourite because of the, her resume has been unique. And, and obviously you got the win already, but it's a closer fight on paper than the first one would have been before that happened, I think. And I think, I think it, it's, it's Natasha who's improving and, t and Dare I say, the great Katie Taylor, who's not stagnated, but she hasn't got any better. No worse, I don't feel, but no better. And, but, but Natasha has improved dramatically, so yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting fight. And a great fight. And she's been in great fights for a while now, and I, I think that's, that's the exciting part of it. That probably down at £135 if you were to meet Katie Taylor, but what about Clarissa Shields, who we know has been starring at middleweight against Savannah Marshall, can come down to 154, has done that in the past. How realistic, how exciting a prospect would, would Clarissa be? Uh, listen, there's... There's huge fights in there, and the two biggest on the table at the minute is Katie and is Clarissa. Um, we, we will try and you know, resolve and get some form of contract with both of them and see what, what that is, and I'll, and I'll pick the best decision for me. But you know, we're talking to the top female, two pound for pound. Arguably, you can argue between yourselves which, which one's number one and which one's number two. Um, but yeah, I, I would have been in with both if, if, that, if the Clarissa fight comes off. So. I think, yeah, for me, as a, as a legacy goes and as fighting the best, I've always said I'm not scared to fight the best. So, yeah. How would you approach it? Because she's obviously the, the bigger woman. The same way as the care. You know, you go away, you, 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 you figure out what, what her weaknesses are. You know, we was lucky enough to, to see her against Savannah, um, as you see now, and it was, it was, the first four rounds was absolutely brilliant. Now, I've taught, I said I start a bit slow, but my first four rounds, I, I've, <laughs> I've, I've actually improved, so... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a different fight. I'm, I'm obviously not Savannah. I, I pose a little bit more different, you know, you know stance and everything wise. And, but I, I approach every fight the same, you know, train hard and make things as difficult as I can in camp to make the fight night easier. Yeah, we know that um, Clarissa has congratulated you for the win over the care as well, which is, is nice. I know you haven't always necessarily seen eye to eye. Barry, just to conclude this part of the conversation, who would you like Tash to face next? Oh. I, th I think Shields is the win for me because you know, the fight she was in with Savannah Marshall was such a great occasion. To have another one of those in the UK would be pretty special, I feel. Yeah.
OK, well, let's uh, talk about action to come, Tash. Uh, and you're going to be involved for Sky Sports this weekend at uh, Alexandra Palace. It's uh, Adam Azim continuing his rise to the ranked super lightweight up against Ryland Charlton, though, who has said that he is going to be a stepping stone. Azim is going to be a stepping stone. How much are you looking forward to this contest at the weekend? Sunday afternoon, Barry? Sunday afternoon. I'm all for Sunday afternoon boxing. Let's have more of that. I, I think it's a great fight. for. It's a step, it's a step up on paper for Adam. But I think he's such a talent that I think he might already, already be beyond this. Mm. And that's a testament because Roland, Char Roland Charlton's a real test for anyone at this level, normally. But this kid's special. He hasn't just got good vision, good timing. He's got crazy natural power. He punches from too far out. But like every, every pre precocious talent, they get away with it. And I think he is one, that's one for the future. I think he's, he's a nailed on future superstar for me. And I just think he's, you know, we're just seeing him now grow. How much are you looking forward to that, to quickly, the, uh, the, the title fight, yeah, the, challenge, the, the headline fight? It's, it's, it's a brilliant fight for Adam. I do, I think it is a step up. Mm. You know, he's, he's headlining a bill, which is the first, it, probably many for him. So, yeah, he's going to want to put on a show. He, he trains hard, he works hard, and he's going to show that. There's a British title fight at Cruiserweight as well coming up, of course. Sad news that Dion Juma, who was supposed to contest it against Mikhail Lowell, has uh, had to retire because of an, an eye socket injury to Tatch Retner, I believe. How much does that underscore the, the peril involved in this trade and why those decisions are, are key to make, Tash? Yeah, I think as boxers and as athletes, we always know the dangers um, of the sport, but you never ever think that, it's one, it's going to happen to you, and two, that it'll happen at all. But, you know, it's... It's just unfortunate, one of them things, and he's been the unlucky one. But, you know, hats off to him. He's had a good, great career. And, and, yeah, I hope I wish him all the best in his future. Yeah, absolutely. A skilled, a skilled fighter as well. He did a real good performance against Richard Riakpour in defeat earlier in the year. So that's the big show coming up on Sunday on Sky Sports, Barry. Hopefully next year, talk of Ryan Garcia against Tank Javonta Davis. Two undefeated fighters meeting perhaps at a catch weight of 136 pounds. Do you believe it yet? Do you dare to believe how exciting oh, are you? You know what boxing's like. You never, until they literally walk into the ring, you're not sure. And even then, you're not guaranteed it's going to happen. But if it does, it's one of the fights of the year. And also, it'll, it'll get some momentum in boxing. Now other fights might get made. It's a great fight. It's a fight that boxing needs. Mm. I, I think Javante Davis is a, is, a, is a phenomenal talent. And Ryan Garcia crosses over to other demographics. So I think it's a, it's a fight that we need to see. How would you see it playing out, Tash? It's a genuine 50-50 fight for me. Um, you know, we see the speed and the power against Luke, Luke Campbell that, that Garcia's got. But then there is just something about Tank. Yeah. You know, he's got that devastating shot. And when he needs to pull it out the bag, he always finds the space to do it. And just pure physique and power. Yeah, it's too big, probably too strong. And yeah, he's someone I look up to as another southpaw. Barry, Barry, some somber story quickly. Just want to ask you about Mark Potter losing his battle against cancer, just 47, previous opponent of Danny Williams. He'll be sorely missed for his boxing, but just for his presence. Yeah, you know, again, the, the things he did for charity and, and, and the people he helped out, for, you know, the kids and, and so on, and, it, and he was loved by everybody. I didn't know him personally, but everyone I know who, who knew him, got especially that London boxing community, which is huge, by the way, very close. They all got nothing but good words to say about him. He, he supported all his, all his coaches and his, his fans and all his friends, and, and he was a warrior in the ring and, and a warrior to the end. Absolutely. Well, good, good words, Barry. Thank you very much. Rest in peace, Mark Potter. Tash, been a pleasure. Barry, thank you as uh, ever. Remember, there's uh, much more to come on Sky Sports as well. The whole Toe to Toe podcast later today. Make sure you join us for that live boxing on Sunday from Ali Pali, 3 p.m. Adam Azim takes centre stage. He is explosive. And we've learned anything so far. Don't blink. Wow, Adam Azim. I was fortunate enough to be around the early days of Prince Azim Hamid. Adam is that fighter. Oh, big shots! And it is over! And this is fantastic! Oh, lovely shots. Ryland Charlton, he is a handful. Small, stocky, strong, but in your face. But he is a bully, he's coming right at you. I'm going to take everyone out in this game. This is my time. Remember 